three years ago after growing up in the country and living in Canberra. She has a boyfriend named Luke, a dog named Feeder. 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 Two parents, four brothers, 12 sheep and a thousand cows. <laughs> Aside from farming and lighting design, Rachel's passions include 3D printing, cooking, hiking, camping, canyoning and occasionally jumping off buildings, which is terrifying <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway, I'll hand over to you, Rachel. But before you start, can you tell us something that nobody knows about you? Yeah, so I, I took a while to actually think of one of these because I've been spilling to everybody about all the antics I get up to. So I didn't have much of an exciting one, but um, considering I grew up on a farm and I've got quite out there hobbies, I've actually never broken a bone ever. Um, and I've never been in a car accident. So that could be why I get quite reckless. But um, so on the screen, I've just got, uh, that's my dog, Feta. Um, everyone thinks her name is Feta, but it's actually Feta. Um, she's an Australian Shepherd and she's basically my best friend. Um, here I've got my family, so I'm actually one of five, so I've got quite a large family. Um, and we've owned farms since I was about four. Um, so our latest farm, Shakoradalu Angus, is actually the first three letters of each of my siblings' names. Um, so no one ever understands what Shakoradalu is, um, so that's where it's from. Um, we have an Angus stud of about over a thousand cattle. Um, we hold a bull sale each year where we sell about 30 to 40 bulls. Um, so that's pretty cool what we do there. It's a family business. Um, no one actually lives on the farm full time. So we all get together on weekends to work together for the business. Um, my dog feeder recently had puppies, which I've, I've spoken about the last few weeks. Um, so she had 10 beautiful puppies. Um, these are my 12 sheep. Um, my brothers all hate them. Everyone in my family hates that we have sheep. They want to get rid of them. They just want cows. Um, they do not produce any money. They're just pets and I love them. Uh, this is my partner and I in a canyon. Um, Luke had never done a canyon since he met me, but he's actually picked it up quite quickly, so he's doing good. Um, and then a few months ago, I actually did an ice climbing course um, in the snowy mountains, so that was actually really cool. And then the last one I've got here is about five years ago. I'm also really into 3D printing, um, and I don't know how much people in the room know about Canberra, but as a present to a friend, I 3D printed the Canberra bus shelter as a joke, and he said, you should turn this into a chess set, so I did. So I 3D printed every iconic building in Canberra and um, turned it into a chess set, um, and then I, I've sold about two of them for about $400. So that was pretty cool. Um, so sort of how did it all begin? A lot of people ask me in lighting, you know, how did I get into lighting? Um, so at uni, I actually studied a Bachelor of Arts in Architecture. I was probably in my second year of my undergrad. And then I saw an internship get advertised for an architectural lighting designer. I um, had no idea what architectural lighting really was. I thought, oh, it's got the word architecture in it. This will be a good experience, and I just did it. Um, it was a three-month unpaid internship, but it was just awesome, um, and I just completely fell in love with lighting. At the time, I actually had no idea who the company I interned with were. I had no idea that they were a global engineering firm. Um, so that was quite eye-opening for me as a 21-year-old. Um, while I was working there, I went back to uni and I did my master's in architecture. I still thought at that point I might become an architect, but working in lighting, I sort of saw what architects did day to day and I decided that that looked terrible and I didn't want to do it. Um, but in lighting, I get to work with a plethora of architects, which I love doing. Um, so as Deb said, I moved to Newcastle about three years ago um, and halfway through the year, I actually left that job that I had where I worked out for about eight years, um, and I've started with EPA. So it's been a pretty fun journey. Um, I wanted to talk about 
So EPA is a consulting engineering firm. Um, they actually have a huge range of services of what we offer in this company. Um, and I'm just one. So that is just me here. Um, so in electrical building services, for instance, we do electrical, comms, AV, security, CCTV, um, huge, a huge range of services. I'm not going to be talking about any of these today because I'm just this one. So I get asked a lot, what is a lighting designer or what does a lighting designer do? So essentially, lighting designers, we like to call ourselves experts in illumination. So really what we do is we try to enhance the experience of a space um, and we try to do this by really enhancing the architecture and the interior design. For us, it's not just providing downlights and allowing people to be able to see through the space. We actually want to create an experience. Um, we also design lighting for all inhabitable spaces. So it's not just interior spaces, we do external spaces, we do buildings, all types of any space that humans inhabit, we will light. Um, we also continually research technology to implement that in our designs. So that's something that we are constantly doing. Um, and I also wanted to put up here, what is a lighting designer not? So I get asked this a lot. So lighting designers do not supply lights. We do not manufacture lights. Um, we're not an electrician. That's what Uvo and Jarrett are here for. So we don't install the lights. Um, and we're also not an electrical engineer. So we usually get complimented by an electrical engineer who will help with the power side of things. Um, but we can't provide the power to the lights either. So in all our projects, we essentially will need to have either an electrician if it's a resi project or an electrical engineer if it's a commercial project. So I like to explain to people, um, and I have in a few one-to-ones, that I essentially see there being three pillars to being a lighting designer. One side of these pillars is the design aspect. It's being an artist, it's being creative, it's designing a space. The third pillar is the research side of it. So we really need to keep up with the research that's happening in the industry to be able to implement those in our designs. Um, and the third one is engineering. So we do a lot of engineering work to make a project work, um, to be on top of the standards, uh, to make a project compliant. So really, um, comparing a lighting designer to an engineer, an engineer will just do the engineering side, an interior designer would just do the artistic side, but we really bring together these three pillars into our designs. So I wanted to talk about why is good lighting so important? Um, so not only does good lighting bring visibility and safety and orientation to a space, but it also affects your mood. It can pro promote productivity, um, it can help patient recovery, and it does impact your overall mental health and well-being. Um, this is a side of lighting that not many people know about. Um, so it's something that I wanted to really touch into my talk today and is actually talk about all the research studies that are happening out there to say how lighting is actually impacting everyone's health. So this is one of my absolute favourites. Um, this is a study in the US where they included two pairs of aged care homes and they split two different buildings um, where they left the lighting as is, is on one side, and then the other side of the building they introduced what we call tunable white lighting. So I didn't want to get too technical in this talk, but essentially tunable white lighting is sequencing the colour of your lighting to match what's happening in the daylight outside. So in the middle of your day, the artificial lighting is to be a quite cool white colour temperature, matching your sunlight. And towards the evenings, it actually tunes down into a warm colour temperature, which is like your afternoon sun, where you're meant to relax. Um, I believe, was it Nora who was talking about melatonin pills? <laughs> um, so essentially what lighting does is having that warm colour temperature is what rises your melatonin levels and tells you to sleep. So this is what's activating your body's circadian clock or circadian rhythm. And has anyone, has anyone in the room heard of a circadian rhythm before? Yeah, yeah perfect. So um, essentially this research study was activating that circadian rhythm, helping patients sleep better at night and be more alert during the day. So what happened was there was a 43% uh, decrease in the amount of falls that were happening in this aged care facility due to the lighting, which is awesome. Uh, this study is also in the US, the Heshong Mahone Daylighting Study. 
So this included 21,000 students in an exam situation where they basically undertook an exam in poor lighting and then undertook an exam with lots of daylighting. And they found that they were 20% faster in doing their maths test. They were 26% faster in reading. And they also had a 5 to 10% increased performance if they were closer to the windows. Um, this is also one of my absolute favourites. Um, this is a neonatal care ward. Um, so they found that in hospital wards, the lighting is just on to crazy bright levels 24 seven. So they looked at how this was acti actually impacting prenatal infants. Um, so they started implementing a light dark cycle. So at night time, they actually covered, they put this cover um, over the infants and they found that, and they had 41 preterm infants in either cycle. Um, and they found that there was a greater rate of weight gain, um, there was a decreased time spent feeding, um, they displayed enhanced motor coordination, and they started to develop their daily melatonin rhythm, which also meant they had shorter hospital stays. Um, I'm a bit short on time, so I think I might actually skip that slide. But I wanted to quickly talk about a few projects that I've worked on, a few of my favourites. Um, this one is a childcare centre. Our um, concept was to create an indoor-outdoor play space. Um, so our brief was to basically design lighting to look like the outside sky. Um, so we went for the concept of a cloud. So this is actually 50 IKEA lanterns that we had with an LED bulb. Um, it was a beautiful project. It looked amazing. The client was very happy. And it was just fun. Um, this is at a school at Carabao High School. Um, again, instead of using downlights, we just looked at ways to um, be quite playful with the lighting. Um, I just love the design on this project. Um, this is one of the first projects I ever worked on as a lighting designer. And I would say this is probably what really got me hooked in the lighting industry. Um, this is the Canberra Casino. And what we had is we had strips of blue and white LEDs behind each of these triangular panels. And during the day, it would just change colour from blue back across to a warm white. And when it sort of mixed halfway in between, it just looked awesome. Um, this is at the old Parliament House in Canberra. Um, one of my favourite aspects of this project was the fact that we retrofitted these heritage um, pendants. Um, we had, it was quite interesting working with Heritage because we had these old lamp holders that held the old halogen um, lamps in them. Um, and it was going to be quite hard to get a uniform light in the ceiling if we were going to have all these rusty arms. So we managed to negotiate with Heritage to put the lamp holders on a Heritage shelf. Um, but it's just a beautiful outcome and it was just incredible being able to work with such amazing Australian Heritage. Uh, so my ideal referrals and clients, um, the top ones are always architects, interior designers, landscape architects, um, but project managers, property developers and homeowners are also great referrals for me. Um, I've also got sort of a second tier, which is less common for us, but um, introductions to builders, electricians and councils also go a long way. Um, so yeah, any of those would be perfect. And that's me today, so thank you. <laughs> Ten minutes went quick. <laughs> Alright, so now we're on to the I have where um, each of our members will use this as an opportunity to pass to, to one of our